everybody. Let's get down and party! going to be the best party ever. Hey, this is nothing. You should have seen what I did for Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, Munch, looks like he took care of everything. Well, except for one last item. Did you check the administration building? Totally empty. I even got the tropical fish from the principal's office. Great. Now check out the detonator. It's time to raise the roof. Hey, gang, do you hate school? Yeah! Then let's have a blast. Whoa. Whoa, there go all the black marks for my permanent record. Hey, it's just a warm-up act, kid. Come on, gang! Let's go blow up the DMV! Uh-oh. Munchie? Hey, Munch, where'd you go? I've got the yellow ticket. Can I take the ride again? The tribunal will come to order. Tribunal? Did I miss something? Do you know where you are? Uh... West Hollywood on Halloween? You have been transported to the astral plane. According to my records, you've been summoned here before. Seven eons ago? Or was it eight? Hey, time flies when you're having fun. So who are you? Where's Wapner? I am Cronus, master of time and space. Yeah, and my friends call me Munchie. Now, can I get back to the party, please? I'm afraid you've been doing too much party. Let's see, the sinking of Atlantis. That was one of your parties, wasn't it? Mm. And there was quite some bash you had aboard the Hindenburg. Yeah. Mount Vesuvius. Chernobyl, mm. the list is literally endless. Mm -hmm. What can you possibly say in defense of yourself? I don't know. Guilty with an explanation? There is no explanation necessary. I cannot, in all conscience, allow you to return to Earth. Therefore, it is my recommendation you be banished to the constellation of Eros Minor. Eros Minor? That's the dullest place of the galaxy. Well, they haven't had a party there since a the Big Bang. The Forum will now vote on this resolution. Well, come on, give me another chance. I tell you what, I'll enter a monastery. Excuse me, sir. You know, Munchie's not a bad little critter. You ought to give him another chance. We discussed it, and he's nowhere near as bad as we were when we were little. Thanks, pal. Love you in here. I'm Scarum. Hey, watch that. I was going to give you a Cadillac, but if you keep it up. <laughs> Sorry. Please, Cronus. He's so cute and adorable. I just want to hold him in my arms and squeeze him to death. Well, that's the best offer I've had all day, sis. Thank you ever so. Master Cronus, as Queen of the Nile and Goddess of the Pharaohs, I say, let him slide. The Forum has spoken. Against my better judgment, you will be returned to Earth on probation. We've had a special request for someone to look after a family there. Your assignment will be to assist them to the best of your abilities. Hey, no problem. Looks like they need to have a party. And no parties. Any further mayhem and you'll be partying on Eros Minor. Understand? The fence post would understand. Now, are you ready to return to Earth? I've been ready since I arrived. Beam me down, Scotty. <laughs> Did you ever have the feeling you were making a monumental mistake?
Leland is here to see you as you requested. Uh, send her in. Ah, Miss McClellan, come in, come in. Uh, can I get you some coffee or something? Uh, no, no, thank you. Ah, well, uh, do sit down, please. I can imagine you're wondering why I summoned you here. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, uh, I suppose many people think that I'm isolated up here in this tower, but nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> I think of my company actually as a winning team. And of course, I am the team captain. My job is to find star players and weed out the others to the farm teams. Do you follow me so far, Ms. McClellan? Yes, I think so. I am aware that there are rumors that our company might be moving to Mexico, and I am here to tell you that that is indeed a fact. Moving to Mexico City? Oh, not immediately. However, I will be flying down next week to oversee the opening of our new facilities, and I'd like it very much if you'd accompany me. <laughs> well, someone has to supervise the new accounting department, Linda. <laughs> Next week? I don't know, I... Mexico City is so wonderful this time of year. White sand beaches, mariachi bands, luxurious hotels. You make it sound like a vacation. All oh, work and no play makes Shelby a dull boy. <laughs> well, I take it other heads of department will be accompanying us. On this particular trip? Mm -hmm. No. No. Uh, your family? Uh, Mrs. Carlyle, unfortunately, has certain community responsibilities, and Shelby Jr. has baseball practice. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, I do have a problem. I don't think I can find anyone to stay with my son, Chris. I'm certain you could if you chose to, Miss McClelland. And Chris would want you to be on the winning team. Sounds less like teamwork and more like mixed doubles. Ooh, I like that too. Well, that's not the way I play. Well, I'd consider very carefully if I were you, Linda. Star players are a common commodity, especially widowed ones with children. Oh. And I am the captain of the team. <laughs> I'll just take my chances with the farm leagues. Will that be all, Mr. Carlyle? Yes, that will be quite all, Ms. McClelland. Mm. Ten minutes till five and counting. A pink slip. You too, Fran. Well, it's not as if we didn't suspect this was coming. It was just a matter of time. I'll bet the whole department got one of these. I probably would have hated Mexico City. What was that? Oh, nothing. Nothing I can prove, anyway. Well, I can always go back to cocktail waitressing. What are you gonna do? I'll find something. Well, save me a place on the unemployment line. <laughs> Well, and it'd be nice if you hit one for a change. Strike one. Hey, this is only a practice game. Yeah, well, tomorrow won't be. We're playing the Hillside Stranglers, and I don't want another shutout. Remember that game last week? I had two singles. Singles don't win ball games. Home runs do. And you can't hit home runs if you don't hit the ball. No one appointed you coach, Brett. That's my job. And he's doing the best he can, so cut him some slack. Anything you say, coach. Well, I say it's your turn at bat. Let McClellan pitch him at you for a while. Take notes, kid. I'll show you how it's done. You're pitching high. Looked like a strike from where I'm standing. Try standing over here, coach. Watch your mouth, Wilson. I know where you live. Why don't you just keep your trap shut, Brett? It was only a suggestion. 
Strike two, McClellan. You're on a roll. Left run the bases, coach? That would be nice to stay in practice. <laughs> All right, listen up. The game starts at 1 tomorrow. I want you here on the field by noon. Brett, pick up the gear, stow it in the locker room. Thanks, Coach. Don't mention it. Hey, man, we'll do better tomorrow. Yeah. Brett can be such a pill sometimes. Don't let him get to you. Well, he is the best player on the team. Yeah, and the problem is he knows it. Brett's not really bad. He's just very competitive. Well, I guess that's not so bad. Depends. He could use a little less of it. Jennifer? Uh, well... Are you going to the dance with anyone tomorrow night? Oh, Brett asked me. I suppose so. Okay, then I'll see you there then. Are you going with someone? Me? Uh, well, that's my mom. I gotta go. Hi, Mom. Hi. <laughs> Mom, is there anything wrong? What makes you say that, honey? Well, I don't know. You've been kind of quiet. I'm okay. How'd practice go? Okay, I guess. Why don't you take these in the house? Okay. I'll get the mail. your automatic sprinkler system. Could you adjust it downward? I don't understand. Well, you see, the wind is traveling west to east this time of year, and it's taking the spray from your sprinklers into my floral garden. These are very valuable plants, Mrs. McClellan. Too much moisture causes them to wilt into the most pathetic shape. Heel killer. Well, the, the problem is that I don't know how to adjust the sprinklers, you see. My husband installed the system, and they've just kept running. I don't think you fully appreciate the gravity of this situation. My prized heliotropes, delphiniums, gladiolas, each has its own specific water requirements during these summer months. All this excess mildew will cause havoc in my garden. Mr. Poindexter, I simply can't afford to call a plumber right now. I'm sorry. Very well, Mrs. McClellan, you leave me no other recourse. There will be a scathing editorial about this in the Fairview Horticultural Gazette. Good day. Come, killer. Shouldn't you like Brett? I mean, he is the best player on the team. His folks have lots of money. All the girls say he's cute. He has everything. And I'm nobody. Nobody.
gonna have to get my brakes adjusted. Who are, who, what are, what are, what are you? Well, that's a good question. I think there's a Latin name for me, but who can pronounce it? All my friends call me Munchie. Munchie? Well, I'm not thrilled with it either, but it's kind of stuck over the years. Hey, you wouldn't happen to have a bag of Fritos around here, would you? Fritos? Here? Uh, I'll raid the fridge after lights out. So I bet you're pretty amazed to see me. Most people are, you know. Oh, uh, look, I think you better leave. Now, let's get down to the bottom line. You got problems, I'm here to solve them. That's part of the job description. Whoops! Incoming, incoming. Mom, Mom, did you see it? See what? The, the weird little creature with the funny face and the long pointy ears. I thought you gave up your imaginary playmate years ago. I did, but it, it was there just a second ago, but now it's gone. Well, I'm not surprised. Look at this room. I mean, there's clothes on the floor. This bed hasn't been made for days. All this stuff everywhere. Mom, listen to me. Chris, I haven't got time for this nonsense. I can't keep this entire house clean by myself. You have to do your share. I want you to clean up this room right now. I'll be back later to check on you. Yes, Mom. Munchie? Back by popular demand. Why didn't you let her see you? Hey, I'm trying to keep a low profile. Adults have even more difficulty accepting me than you do. Well, where'd you go? You know, your mom's right. Your room's a mess. There are plenty of places to hide. Yeah, and this is going to take hours. You want a real problem? Try cleaning my room. Say the magic words, janitor in a drum. You did all that? Hey, that's just a preview of the coming attractions. Wait till you see the main feature. Chris, I just wanted to... Your room. Yeah, what about it? Oh, how'd you clean it up so fast? Special effects. We could almost believe it. Oh, well, what was that that you wanted to tell me? What? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to slap at you. It wasn't your fault. Give me a hug. A hug? Why? Because <laughs> I need one. <gasps> Are you sure you're feeling okay? Yeah, everything will be all right. Good night. Night, Mom. Something is definitely bothering her. Yeah, but she won't tell me what it is. I can't tell her about you. We'll get around to her problems later, I promise. Can you do anything? Close enough for government work. Well, my dad... He died last year. Can you, can you know, bring him back? There are limits. Uh, I, I'd like to help you there, but he's gone on to another world. And I can only affect things in this one. I thought you could solve my problems. Come on, ask for something. Anything you want. <laughs> sure. Hey, pal, I got a lot riding on you, so I'm willing to pull out all the stops. Ask and ye shall receive. Okay. Let's see. I want a Death Race 2000 arcade video game with a 16-bit digital graphics and a dual cross-key control deck. And I'd like it displayed on a 40-inch, 700-line high-resolution monitor with an MTS surround sound decoder and a DBX noise reduction. Well, gee, for a moment there, I thought you were going to ask for something difficult. I say, say the magic words, Super Mario Brothers! This is incredible! Whoa! Whoa, this is way cool! Brett, who's this kid I know? He says he has this system at home, but I've only seen it in the mall. Well, it's no longer at the mall. We're kind of borrowing it. This sound system is fantastic. Makes everything so real. That depends on how real you want it to get. You mean you could make it more intense than this? Say the magic words. Death Race 2000! Wow! I'm actually driving! faster than those guys from Domino's. Hey, 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 keep your 
guys on the road! You know, maybe you should have taken driver's ed first. Well, I'm sorry. It's a lot easier to control when you're not actually inside it. Well, anyway, I'm getting the hang of it. I hope so, because we got company dropping in. Whoa! It looks so real! That is the idea, isn't it? We're not playing Tiny Toon Adventures here, you know. With all those bombs, I can hardly keep the car on the highway. Take the truck route. Come on, let's go. scored a thousand points on that one. Not that a thousand points is particularly important at this moment. What do you mean? Ah! We could have crashed! A minor obstacle. Wait till you get further down the road. They got a fleet of armored battle trucks waiting for us with heat-seeking nuclear missiles. It's gonna be like World War III! Get us out of here! This is too real! Yeah, fantasy's only fun when it's on the other side of the screen. Say the magic words, there's no place like home! We could have been killed! Now, would I let that happen to you? Oh, sure, it looked real, but we were safe inside the computer all the time. Someday, you may be able to do that for yourself. I think I'll stay off the video games for a while. Yeah, reality does have its positive points. Could you, like, get me other things? Anything I wanted? Sure. So you're Donald Trump, okay? Okay. I want a super VHS camcorder and a CD player uh -huh. um, with 200 CDs, your choice. None of the classics and nothing before 1980. I would like a Super Nintendo with like 100 games and I want some walkie talkies with at least a three mile range. Then I need a cellular phone and a pager. Well, let's see. What about covers Radio Shack? Is that a nine channel digital sound or a 10? Mom's gonna be here any second. She's gonna see all this stuff. Well, just tell her you couldn't turn the shopping channel off. Come on, Munchie. I have to tell her about you. Unless there's some way you can send all this stuff back. I only know one magic word that gets rid of everything you own. What's that? Reaganomics. Come on, Chris, rise and shine. Oh, okay, I'll rise, but do I have to shine? You went to bed with your clothes on again. Yeah, I guess I did. I had trouble falling asleep. We'll take a shower and change. Breakfast will be on in a few minutes. Hey, did she say breakfast? Hey, where'd all that stuff go? Back to the mall. It's probably driving their inventory people crazy. Well, can I get it back? Sure, but all this teleportation stuff is a strain on my resources. Well, what's the use in having something if you can't show it to people? Well, that depends. Did you want all that stuff, or did you really just want to impress people with it? Yeah, I 
you're right. I wanted to show it to people. So take them down to the mall. It's all there. Let's get down to breakfast. Well, let's see. On Saturday morning, Mom usually makes pancakes. With lots of butter? Uh-huh. And maple syrup? And maple syrup. And Thousand Island dressing? And Thousand Island dressing? I gotta take a shower. Okay, so Thousand Island dressing makes him want to take a shower. <laughs> Where have you been? Jogging, which is a tremendous challenge when you're trying not to be seen. No wonder you went jogging. Do you know how many pancakes we ate this morning? Seventeen. Yes, and how many of those did I actually eat? Four. It's a good thing Mom didn't see me sneaking those under the table to you. I think she's getting a little suspicious. Just tell her you're a growing boy. It's a good day. Hey, is this the way you're working off breakfast, doing the lawn? Yeah, yard chores. And I have to finish this lawn before I can go to the game. Well, at this rate, you'll be here till dinner. Why don't you let me give you a hand? You want to mow the lawn. Hey, who wants to mow the lawn? I say, let's put it on autopilot. Autopilot? Those are the magic words. Wow, this is incredible. Time. Yeah, and then we can check on what's happening for lunch. Hey, Munchie, where'd you go? Hi, Chris. Hi, Jennifer. What's with your lawnmower? Oh, it's a new experimental model. Computer controlled. Brett has a new toy. Brett always has a new toy. Hey, Jennifer, what do you think? My dad picked it up this morning. I think it's a good thing you're wearing a crash helmet. So, you want to ride over the game with me? Maybe Chris and I walk over and meet you there? Uh, I still got the yard to do. Come on, I got a spare helmet. It beats walking. See you at the game, Chris. Hey, Chris, better keep an eye on that lawnmower. Oh, no. Oh, jeez, Mr. Poindexter! Munchie! Munchie, where are you? Right here, right here. Keep your shirt on. The lawnmower went out of control. You've got to stop it. So where is it now? It's attacking Mr. Poindexter, see? Oh, no! Uh-oh, someone up there doesn't like me. Who's that? That's Kronos, my probation officer. Nice guy, but not a lot of laughs. I don't think Mr. Poindexter has a very good sense of humor, either. Uh-oh! <laughs> Young man. Yes, Mr. Poindexter? I'd like to have a word with you about your lawnmower. Let's go, let's go, Stranglers. Let's show them who we are. Come on, let's get some hits. Come on, let's strike them out, come on. It was a ball, for God's sake. Come on, strike them out. Come on, only one more strike. Huh? 
I expected nothing less, son. All right. Wodarski, you're up. Next batter. Bob Murray, let's go. You're on deck. What do you say, Elkins? What do you expect me to say? We've been playing for 30 seconds, and you're already on the scoreboard. <laughs> well, this isn't a game. It's more of an exercise in humiliation. Say, why don't you do yourself and those pint-sized pansies a favor and forfeit? Every year you make that suggestion, and every year I tell you where to shove it. So now that we've got that formality over with, uh, get lost. Lost? Is that a familiar word to you, Elkins? Was that? I tried to catch it, Pop. You tried. Winners succeed, losers try. Enough said? Enough said. Well, it's about time. Their coach is a real puke. Your mom works for him, doesn't she? Yeah, I guess so. I'll do better next time, coach. You gave it your best shot, McClellan. That's all anyone can ask. At least we're not getting slaughtered. We might win this year. Everyone's playing better. Almost everyone. McClellan. You don't think I'd stay away from the great American pastime, do you? You like baseball? No, but I love those hot dogs. 
So how's it going out there? Well, we're losing and I'm playing lousy. Ah, don't worry, don't worry. I'm on your team now. So, Chris, you think you can find out if the peanuts are dry roasted? Yeah, I could. Okay, great. Now, listen, I got an idea. You're gonna have to trust me on this, and there's no reason why you shouldn't. When you go back out there, I want you to go up to that coach. I want you to tell him to put you right up at bat, okay? If he gives you any guff, this is unbelievable. Just insist. This is important. You go up to bat, because I'm behind you all the way on this one. Like I told Babe Ruth, just keep on swinging. Who's Babe Ruth? He's a little before your time. They named that candy bar after him. Did you help him? Hey, I helped all the greats. How do you think they got to be great? Well, can you, well, you know, help me too? You think I'm just lounging around in a barrel of smelly towels for my health? Get out there and play ball! <laughs> Anything wrong, Pop? Wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. I'll, I'll tell you all what's wrong. This isn't a game here. This is life. If you start losing now, boys, it's a hard habit to break. We're winning, Pop. Winning? You call this winning? A shutout game, Shelby. Now, that is winning. It's not enough to simply defeat an opponent, boys. You have to grind them into the dust. Now, let's go out there and stop acting like a bunch of mama's boys or something even worse. And let's get some hits. Come on. Ah, uh, just a moment, sir. What I do now, Paul? Well, conference time. It's not what you did, it's what you're going to do that's important. You see that pitcher there, Brett? He's their star player. Mm -hmm. With him, they could still win the game, but without him, the game is ours. Now, if you can't buy off a powerful adversary, what do you do? Crush him? Exactly. Now, when you get up to bat, I want you to crush that ball with all your strength directly at Brett. You knock him out of commission, the game is won. But, but I wanted to try for another home run, Pop. Shelby, Shelby, you have to look at the big picture, not an individual moment of glory. Let me put it this way. You knock Brett out of commission, there'll be an extra hundred dollars in your allowance. Capiche? Capiche. It's my boy. You're up, son. Make me proud of you. Okay, Coach. I got the wind knocked out of me. I can finish the game. I don't think so. I'm calling your parents. They're going to take you to a doctor. You think you can walk? Yeah. McClellan, you're pitching. Don't worry. You'll do fine. Wow. 
Ah, my favorite sport. Peanuts, popcorn, Cracker Jacks, hot dog. Say that magic word. It's time to play ball. <laughs> Munch. I think it's time to put a little spin in this kid's pitching arm. You all right, son? What a fastball! Strike one! Just take a little easier next time. Sorry, Sherm. Dig this crazy screwball! There's the screwiest screwball I've ever seen. Strike two! Nothing yet, Concord fans. Come on, only three more strikes. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Just strike one. I wonder. Come on, Sherman, let's get a hit! Check this one out, guys. Yeah, come on, Sherman, go, go, go! All right, good news, Brett's gonna be all right. How's the game going? If you didn't see it, you wouldn't believe it. Hey, we've got two on. Yeah, the team's playing great, especially Chris. McLellan? All right, base is loaded. Next batter. That'd be me, coach. Well, go for it. Listen, Shelby, this kid is too unpredictable. I want you to walk him. We'll be walking harder. I think we should have... Stop trying to think, Shelby. Just walk him. That's an order. This is for you and your orders. This kid looks like Joe DiMaggio to me. Of course, I did lose my glasses. Wow, this is gonna be great. We're gonna win this game yet. That ball's going, going, going. Oh. It's gone. I am canceling sponsorship of this team. Fine, go ahead. I never wanted this team anyway. I hate everybody on it. In fact, I hate baseball. Hate baseball? No. It can't be. These are not normal banking hours, but surely the loan could be extended. Couldn't I refinance the house? 
I say, when is it you back from vacation? But that's past the due date. I... C I understand. Yes, I'll call back Monday morning. Thank you. your game. I hit a home run and we won. Oh, that's terrific. Mom, can I still go to the dance tonight? Sure. Have some fun. Are you sure you don't want me to stay home instead? No, I'm just gonna rest in my room tonight, honey. Hello? Just a minute. It's Jennifer from next door for you. For me? Hello? Hi, Chris. Brett called. He's okay, but his parents are making him stay in bed tonight. I was thinking that maybe we could go to the dance together. Unless, of course, you're going with someone else. Uh, no. Um, I'll pick you up at 7. See you then. Okay, bye. Right. Hey, pal, you look like the cover of Geek's Quarterly. What's happening? There's the dance at the junior high tonight. You need any lessons? I taught Fred Astaire. Who? Another one before your time, pal. Could you use a live band? You play music? No, but I manage a band, and they're fabulous. Say, you're taking that girl Jennifer, aren't you? Yeah, but she likes Brett. And Brett has lots of money. And I want to impress her, too. Hey, did you ever see the movie Cinderella? Yeah, my folks rented it one weekend. Remember the fairy godmother? You could do that for me, couldn't you? I sure can. Just say the magic words, lifestyles of the rich and famous. Now, come a little closer, will you? First, I think you need some fashionable apparel. Whoa! Next, some ostentatious accoutrements. Oh, my God, this is a Rolex. And leave us not forget a corsage for Princess Charming. This is great. Uh, let me see here. What comes next? I don't think I have a pumpkin. You want to arrive in style, don't you? We'll have to come up with something. Say, I think I have an idea. Wow! Incredible. Yeah, changing mice into horses is so medieval. Hop in, hop in, check it out. Great. Hey, not bad. Whoa, this is the best. Ready, pal? Onward, onward. And away we go. Chris, you look great. As do you, Jen. Come, my chariot awaits. This is incredible. Well, we could walk. But I prefer to travel first class. <laughs> Great. Bye, Mom. Milady, boss man. Chris, this is great. How can you afford this? 
Well... Shall I take the scenic route, sir? Well, by all means. We want everyone to be there upon our arrival. Very good, sir. Chris, how did you get all this? Well, uh, would you like some entertainment? I've got a TV, a VCR, a AM, FM, stereo, CD player. Want to call Paris? Paris? You didn't answer my question. Yeah, well, your question. Uh... Well... May I suggest that the young lady avail herself of the refreshment bar? The grape soda is an excellent vintage. strikes against me, and the whole game was in my hands. And the pitcher pitched the ball, and I swung and scored the home run that won the game. That's incredible. I wish I'd been there. Well, there is another game next week, unless the other team decides to stay home. I'll be there for sure. That's the ninth time you've told that story. Well, people like to hear how I won the game. There were eight other players on the team. Well, don't we count? you like I don't like everything about him. He picked up nothing but his worst habits. Well, I'm somebody now. There's a lot of people who like me this way. Maybe you should finish this dance with him. Where are you going? My heart is an open Hey, pal! Check this out! <laughs> I can't believe it. Somebody actually threw away a perfectly good Twinkie. Wait a minute. Everybody's dancing in there. What are you doing out here? Thinking. I don't understand, Jennifer. The harder I try, the less she likes me. Well, maybe you're just trying too hard. Everybody else seems to like me. Ah, there's the operative word. Seems. The way people act and the way people think can be two different things. Well, I can't read people's minds. Au contraire, my lad. Everyone transmits their thought waves. It's simply a matter of activating the sensory antenna to receive them. You mean I could read people's minds? Say the magic words. The amazing Kreskin. <laughs> Another one before your time. But you're still tuned in. But I'm not picking up anything from you. That's because I always say what's on my mind. Now, you go ahead. Give it a shakedown cruise on the dance floor, OK? OK. Say, I wonder what the expiration date is on this. Serve before January 1st, 2012. Yep, still good. <laughs> hey, Chris, you better keep your eyes on the road. Sure, coach. Say, I heard from Brett's parents he's gonna play for us in next week's game. 
Well, I don't know. We did pretty well today without him. I mean, I don't think he's going to like playing second base very well while I'm pitching. Listen to him. I used to feel sorry for this kid. Two lucky pitches and he's coming on like Oral Hershiser. Brett was bad, but McClellan's coming on like Frankenstein. Look, I gotta keep my eye on things. Uh, keep that pitching on, Lisa. Hey, Sherm, that's some game today, huh? Yeah, some game for you. The rest of us were along for comedy relief. Yeah, some game. I mean, we played well all together as a team. Then why have you been telling everybody you won the game? Yeah, teamwork is important. Sheesh. How long am I going to have to listen to this doofus? I guess I'll see you around. Yeah, but not if I see you first. Look at him. He thinks he's so cool because he's wearing a tuxedo. How'd he get such a big head all of a sudden? I remember when he used to be such a nice guy. Now look at him. Hi. Hi. What happened to Jennifer? She had to go home early. By the way, my name's Denise. You're Chris McClellan. Everyone knows you. Yeah, I guess they do. You know, I'm not actually here with anyone. Could you maybe take me home later? Sure, why not? Uh, he acts like such a geek. But everyone thinks he's special. And his folks probably have lots of money. Won't the kids be jealous when they see me with him? You can forget it. Hey, where are you going? I'm not ready to leave yet. Hey, pal, you look depressed. How about we go for a pizza? Please, turn it off. I've heard more than I care to hear. Yeah, the inside of the mind is a pretty private place. There, now you're disconnected. So why is it down in the mouth? Didn't you get everything you wanted? I thought if I could make good on the team and have lots of things that I'd be somebody. Well, there's more to life than baseball games and expensive toys. It's more important to know who you really are. Yeah, I guess I should have been happy just being me. Yeah, that's a pretty good person to be, you know. Hey, I think I'll go for that pizza. Great! Get inside! I know a great place just off the interstate, and I'm buying! Chris? You're not asleep yet. No, not yet. We need to talk. I haven't wanted to burden you with my problems before. But this affects both of us. Problems? It's our house. There's a major balloon payment due in two weeks. Your father and I financed it that way so we could move in when you were born. Anyway, I've applied for an extension on the mortgage, but it's subject to job verification. I don't understand. I lost my job, Chris. And I don't know how long it's going to be before I can find another one. We could lose everything. How much do we owe? Almost $20,000. There's something wrong. I guess it's hard for parents to realize their baby's grown up. They don't have to protect him from the truth anymore. Well, we'll get by somehow. That's just what your father used to say. Maybe we will. It's past your bedtime, young man. So much for being treated like an adult. <laughs>
Sweet dreams. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Wake up! Time to raid the fridge! Cold lasagna's excellent this time of night. How long have you been there? Oh, long enough to know that you've got problems another video game can't cure. Yeah, 20,000 problems. I don't suppose you could, like, borrow that money from the bank, could you? Eh, wrong answer. See, Cronus would have kittens. Yeah, I guess you're right. Anytime I ask you for your help, everything seems to go wrong. Well, at least I'm consistent. Besides, where would you get $20,000? Listen, why don't you get some shut-eye, and I'll take care of the rest, okay? Good night now. Night, Munchie. sell it to me because I was a miner. You won't make mistakes. Now, let's get down to business, shall we? Here it is. Ah, yes. He's back. He? You know what this is? Most extraordinary being. Older than time itself. How do you know this? Come and see for yourself. Ah, here we are. Ah. Legend has it that he is the last survivor of a race that ruled the world before man. All the others died off. He alone survived. What can be? Not the same creature. Who's doing this exposition? You or me? Sorry. Throughout history, this creature was the mentor behind countless individuals of power and wealth. Power and wealth? Didn't I just say that? The lecture is finished. My consultation fee is $1,000. $1,000? That's rather steep, don't you think? Where else can you go for this kind of information? Kmart? I accept all major credit cards. Be sure and destroy those carbons. By the way, sir, you might not still be interested in that poison dagger, would you? <laughs> I don't think so. On second thought, have it delivered on Tuesday. It's my wedding anniversary. <laughs> find the wealth and power that he seeks. What do you think, Lenore? Never more, never more. What does that mean, never more? Snow in July?
from heaven. <laughs> I love this kind of weather. Personally, I'm dreaming of a green Christmas. How about you, pal? Now, this is what I call trickle-down economics, but seriously, folks. <laughs> this could be a typical house in a typical neighborhood, but last night something quite atypical occurred here. While a summer heat storm brought thunder and lightning to our community, it apparently brought a deluge of dollar bills to this particular house. May we have a moment of your time, Mrs. McClellan? Come on, Chris, we're gonna be on television. Have you any idea how much money has fallen into your yard? Well, that's hard to say, but somewhere close to $20,000. And you have no idea where it came from? From up there in the sky. The funny thing is, $20,000 is exactly what we needed to pay off the loan on our house. It just seems too good to be true. There you have it, proof that miracles still happen. And while there may not be pennies from heaven, it could rain dollar bills on your house tonight. This is Hanna-Barbera, Channel 2, limited attention span news. I must have that creature. Oh, and I shall, children. You can be sure of that, or oh, my name isn't Shelby Carlyle. <laughs> Jennifer. Chris, you know, I wanted to tell you... Before you say anything, I'd like to apologize for last night. You were right. I really was acting like a geek. I'm sorry I ran out. I just couldn't understand why you were acting that way. Well, can we still be friends? Yeah, I'd like that. Don't you dare touch that! These bills fell on my property. You can't have them. They're mine. What seems to be the problem, Mr. Poindexter? I'll thank you to keep these uniformed stormtroopers off my property. After everything else that's happened... Mr. Poindexter, I told you I would compensate for the damages at the earliest opportunity. Well, in the meantime, I'll take these as down payment. A number of bills also fell in my yard, you know. How much? Thirty-one dollars. And it's all mine. Miss McClellan! I speak with you. Are you from the newspapers? Oh, no, 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 ma'am. Treasury Department. Treasury Department? Yeah, Todd Hapner, regional supervisor. Well, now, don't let the title throw you. I'm really just a civil servant. Are you saying this money belongs to you? No, no, I don't work for the IRS. A pretty unusual occurrence that happened last night, huh? I hope it's a nightly occurrence. Yeah. Uh, do you mind if I take a closer look at one of those bills? Do you think I forged these bills? Well... I work for the government, man. I'm not paid to think. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Dig, except for one thing. What? Uh, see the serial number here? Uh -huh. Well, that's part of a series that the Mint hasn't even printed yet. Um, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to accompany me down to my office. Is that a polite way of saying that I'm under arrest? No. No, ma'am, it's just that, like I say, it's sort of an unusual situation. I just want to get you to dictate a statement, that's all. I see. Uh, well, can I bring my son? There's no one to take care of him. Well, that's fine. We'll make both of you comfortable, all right? It won't take long. Chris, honey, come here. We're going downtown. OK, bye-bye. Bye. Oh, and uh, one more thing, Miss McClellan. I'm afraid I'm going to have to um, take all of these bills that you've gotten into custody. But it was a nice dream. While it lasted. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I'll have to take these into custody, too. Thank you. Mr. Big, I'm waiting for you.
Hello? Little friend? I know you're here. Where are you? Oh, there's no need to be afraid of me. I'll be your pal. I'm Chris's pal, you know, and I'd like it very much if we could be friends, too. This guy is such a perfect target. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, come on out and show yourself. I'm a very powerful man, you know. I can do all sorts of things for you. How about a complimentary trip to Vegas? How about you celebrating July 4th a little early this year, hmm? <laughs> Come on, little guy. Where are you? Smells like something's burning. This guy is really smoking. <laughs> oh, I'm having a ball here, pal. You want to watch that first step? It's a doozy. <laughs> oh. Hey, man, you know he deserved it. <laughs> All right, you've taken your best shot. Now it's my turn. <laughs> that does it. The gloves are off. Let me tell you something, big boy. You say the cutest things when you're angry. Oh, I'm gonna catch you or I'll keep up you. Listen, buddy, I don't know you that well, but you look a little whipped. I've heard about people who like to feed their own face, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Everybody gets a charge out of me. <laughs> oh. Well, you're not the most handy guy to have around the kitchen, are you? <laughs> I'm telling you, I break myself up in moments like this. I get the kryptonite potatoes. I'm weakening. I appreciate your cooperation. And of course, yours too, Chris. Sure. Mom, can Jennifer and I go to the roller rink? Oh, go ahead. The skates are in the hall closet. So, you're saying that the money came from a counterfeit ring in Westlake? Well, we got word they were uh, shipping a large consignment of bills last night, and when we intercepted their plan, they evidently panicked and dumped the bills right over at your house. Well, I'm sorry things had to work out this way. $20,000 would have solved a lot of problems. I lost my job yesterday. Well, Look, you know, our office is expanding, and we're looking for people with a background in accounting. Why don't you come in Monday morning and fill out an application? Me? A treasury agent? <laughs> Think about it, you know. I mean, the government's been taking your money all these years. Now's a chance for you to get some of it back. <laughs> I'm, uh, collecting for Jerry's kids. No, you're not. Now, what's in the bag? Hey, what is this? An unscheduled eclipse? You got lunch, you... That's right. And I'm gonna keep it, too. Hey, what are... Chris, 
such a good idea, Mr. Hepner. Well, I think under the circumstances, you can call me Todd. Thank you very much. Nice day for a drive. You! What are you doing out of the bag? I like to stick my head out the window like a dog. But uh, you're going a little fast, aren't you, Bob? The accelerator is stuck to the floor! Well, if I were you, I'd try the brakes. The brakes don't work! That's a shame. Try switching off the ignition. That doesn't work either. Ah, too bad. Boy, I hope this baby's still under warranty. We can't let him get away with Munchie. Who or what is Munchie? Munchie's the little creature I was telling you about. You said he was imaginary. Oh, him. We were friends when I was a kid. You! You're doing this! Are you kidding? Are we almost there? I, I, I hope we get there soon because I gotta... Munchie is. Well, he's been doing some serious time in traffic school. Looks like we got a fire. Oh, my goodness, it's the police. I've already been to traffic school. We've got to get away. Well, we could always fly. Fly? You could make this vehicle fly? Say the magic words, Evil Knievel! <gasps> what happens now? You can write me about it, pal. This is where I get off. Hey! Hey! Come back right here! Insurance rates. Watch it! Watch it! Chris, Chris, listen to me. Look, if he was anything like my friend, I'm sure he got out in time, all right? If you go back into your house, I bet he's waiting for you in your room right now. You think so? I think so. We got you down for 73 violations including reckless driving, destruction of private property, and endangering public safety. Now, will you volunteer for field sobriety? Just a moment! Don't you know who I am? I am Shelby Carlisle, president of Carlisle Communications Corporation. We are familiar with your name, sir. Well, that's more like it. Too familiar. You're the guy that harassed, then fired my wife. Your wife? What a, what a lovely woman! Just a minute, you can't do this to me! Well, I, I'm a member of the NRA! The NAACP! Well, show's over. What do you say we go home?
Munchie, where are you? Hey, it's the Munchie Show, starring Munchie. Tonight, Munchie's special guest star is, you guessed it, me. And now, here's Munchie. Munchie. In person. I always wanted to be on television. Maybe do a guest shot on Geraldo. What do you think? Where have you been? Visiting our old friend Carlisle in jail. They finally had him moved to the cycle ward. Well, actually, I just stopped in to say goodbye. Goodbye? Well, Kronos is calling me back to the astral plane, and he's not someone you want to keep waiting. But you can't leave yet. That money you brought down, it was counterfeit. We still have to help my mom. Hey, that's all part of the plan. Because of that counterfeit money, your mother will have a better job. The bank will extend the mortgage. And who knows, you might even get a stepfather. I'd say that's not bad for three days' work. But I'll miss you. Hey, don't worry, pal. You haven't seen the last of me. You mean you're coming back? By popular demand. Now stand back, will you? I gotta get out of here. <laughs> witnessed Munchie's actions back on Earth. Since you requested his assistance, may I ask if you found his performance satisfactory? Well, that's one point in his favor. Great shuttle service you got here, folks. So what do you say, crony? Am I off probation? Not quite. Look, I've been off the party circuit long enough. Go ahead, do your worst. Send me anywhere. I'll have the place rocking in no time. Actually, there's someone down on Earth who needs a lot of help right now. Then what am I hanging around here for? Who got lucky this time? Should have no trouble finding him. Here's what he looks like. Well, I wouldn't miss our next picture, folks. But until then, here's the end of this one. 